If you remember that intro, then you probably know just how big the Steve Harvey show was back in the day. Well, turns out no one ever wanted a reunion because the man was always a know-it-all, to the point that even he was aware of it. I'm hosting. Cause that for me was cool. I make it like it's my show. I right. bring everybody out, lay it out like that. May come as a shock now, but this seems to have been his personality since day one. Still, that's just another side of him. I think he's still that same Steve. He's still that. But now you're also seeing another side of him that he never had to show me. And that's interesting. What's more, this may have been one of the reasons he wasn't able to land movie roles, even while he was in the limelight. I didn't want to be a movie star. No, you couldn't be a movie star. There are 30,000 new scripts in Hollywood every year. Not one of them asked for a country bumpkin black dude that can't talk good old baby and look like Mr. Potato Head. There ain't none. When someone retired from stand-up and has had over seven shows on air at the same time in their career, you'd expect that if they did anything close to a reunion, the room would be packed. However, Steve Harvey has continuously proven to be the exception to every logical expectation of a celebrity of his status. It seems the reason this man has stayed appearing as a fraud is because he might actually be one. I mean, what other explanation could you come up with for why people aren't lining up for his reunion? Well, he's not just a fraud, he's apparently also also a tyrant at work. The thing about Steve Harvey's public image is that even regular people know he is nothing short of a performer. All of those crazy ideas and seemingly ingenious ideas may portray him as a sage on how people are wired, but as many people believe, all of that might be a sham. In reality, rumor has it that Steve is the last person who would care about the well-being of the person next to him. This is even besides the fact that people already know he's not the best practicer of his own preaching and how he's been able to get away with it, pandering to everyone above him. A lot of cats that uh, Steve Harvey, Tim Reed, they all try to look like Richard Pryor. I, mean, I, I told, I told, I said, I'll try to be Richard Pryor. That being the norm for him, Steve in turn seems to treat the people beneath him in the worst type of way, something that seems to be telling by how nobody from his past was willing to be reunited with him. As I mentioned, this isn't close to the first time people have been given a reason to question Steve Harvey's true personality. Even if you choose not to believe anything people are saying about him, you can't possibly ignore all the controversies he's been at the center of over the years. From claims that he literally made made himself inaccessible to the very people working in the same office as him, all the way to asking those people to pass off stolen content as his own, Harvey might be the closest thing to a real-life villain there is. This picture about him, considering everything that's in the news, makes it easy to see how people might want to dissociate from him. Valid as these reasons may be, most people might still have doubts about Steve, because common, the guy puts on a pretty good act. Well, if you've been looking for conviction about him, let me be the first to tell you, you're in the right place. You know, I want to be like Chappelle and really say some things, but what I really got in my heart to say if I say it, I'm, my career is over. For someone who at the beginning of his career was sleeping inside his car, you'd think Steve Harvey would even try to treat people nicely, but fans are now starting to see how he wound up homeless in the first place. Horrible as he may be, it would be disingenuous not to give him his props. Harvey started from the bare bottom and built himself into a multinational brand. With enough awards to fill up a bedroom, the celebrity host is easily one of the most respected figures in Hollywood. He got to that point by consistently honing his craft, right from the early days of doing stand-up shows, all the way to sitting at the pinnacle of television. Today, I dare say Steve is second to no one on that front. Besides having a show that has been one of the most watched for more than half a decade, with celebrities popping in every other day, that same show also has people fighting to be on it. This is the type of influence Steve Harvey carries over the entertainment space. But like many parts of that industry, perception is never reality, and no one has told the story better than the people who have worked with him. Think about it. How many times have you really seen or heard that Steve Harvey was hosting a reunion? Probably not a lot. This is pretty odd for someone who had hit sitcoms in the 90s. I'm talking about the times when shows like Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and Friends were all the rage. The thing those shows have that Steve's own don't seem to have is the strong bond that makes people want to reunite. Turns out that for Steve's shows, this actually has nothing to do with the cast. Steve was just the problem all along. Don't take it from me. Take it from one of the people that has worked with him.
In a recent interview with Comedy Hype, actress Terry Vaughn spilled some piping hot tea about Steve Harvey, suggesting that his cocky attitude has been a constant throughout his career. Vaughn reminisced about her time on The Steve Harvey Show, sharing that the conversations on set were often punctuated by Steve's unwavering cockiness. She revealed, Steve's always been cocky. Always. He, oh, the conversations me, him, Wendy said, used to have on set, it's the same sh Steve Harvey's career has seen highs and lows, with moments of intense success and relevance. But Vaughn noted that his recent endeavors might not be resonating with audiences in the same way they once did. I think he's still that same Steve. He's still that. But now you're also seeing another side of him that he never had to show before. And that's interesting. Steve's co-workers aren't the only set of people to have felt the brunt of his true personality. Rumor even has it that he might have a streak of meanness. And there's proof. In a 2022 episode of the Smartless podcast, Kenan Thompson found himself sharing an interesting anecdote about his interactions with Steve Harvey, hinting at yet another instance where Steve may not have been the most affable individual. During the podcast conversation with hosts Jason Bateman, Sean Hayes, and Will Arnett, the topic turned to Kenan's impersonation impersonation of Steve on the comedy scene. When Will Arnett mentioned that Steve was one of his favorite characters portrayed by Keenan, the Nickelodeon alumnus didn't hold back about the initial response from the Judge Steve Harvey star. Keenan revealed, Steve Harvey didn't love it in the beginning. I know him so he would definitely send messages through mutual friends or just through the press, like tell the little fat boy to knock it off. Despite Steve's less than enthusiastic reception of the impersonation, Keenan didn't back down. In fact, he decided to expand on it, adapting it to suit whatever Steve Harvey was up to next, such as when he ventured into projects like Little Big Shot. I never stop, he continued. As soon as he does something, whenever he steps away from Family Feud and does something else, I'm on that too. If you're on the radar, you're on the radar. Interestingly, Keenan had previously discussed Steve's reaction to his impersonation in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter. Steve wasn't overly excited about it in the beginning, but he grew to love it. I don't do it out of any malice, he told the outlet in July 2020. He told me in different ways or he'd say it on his radio show, and then people would call me and be like, hey, Steve Harvey's talking about you this morning on the radio, and I'd be like, all right, well, I'm sure he'll settle down once he realizes that I'm not attacking him. The only set of people these details about Steve's life have come as a surprise to are people outside the industry. In the eyes of those in the industry, this information was old news. Not only has he been a terrible colleague to many of these people, but he's also outrightly stolen their creativity. Remember when I mentioned that he, Steve, forces his team to pass on information that isn't his as his. This is what he reportedly did to Cat Williams. In a recent episode of Club Shay Shay, Williams made an appearance and dropped some bombshells about his relationship with Steve Harvey. And now that he gone, you gonna act like, he wanted to be a movie star. You stop it. He revealed that he once challenged Steve Harvey to a comedy showdown, but Steve backed out at the last minute. He also claimed that Steve Harvey stole some of his jokes and material and that he was not a genuine person. And it seems he really did steal those jokes. Here's Kat's version. If you had 10, 15 dollars, you could go to the gas station with confidence because you knew you was either going to be full or damn near full. If you had a 20, you ain't even talk to the person at the counter. You just 20 on the left. And here's Steve's. Gas, $4 a gallon. Can't even pump gas like you used to no more. $4 a gallon? You remember when you used to go to pump and put the nozzle in there and hit it? Be sitting there talking, be on your phone, hey. What What's more is that Williams wasn't the only victim of Harvey's joke theft, as the famed presenter was also caught up in a situation with comedian Mark Curry, and of course Williams also brought that up in his interview. Williams then called out Harvey, insinuating that the Family Feud host plagiarized Curry's role as Mark Cooper on the Steve Harvey show. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where where he the principal and he wear a suit. And then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. And it's a man unit. 
the same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. Now Steve got a sitcom where he the principal. As it would turn out, Kat's revelation of Steve stealing from Mark Curry was actually the second time it had happened. The first came a while back when Mark Curry claimed the famed host had stolen some of his jokes on his NBC talk show, Steve. Here's the joke Curry was talking about. Halloween was a trip, Halloween. We couldn't afford no Halloween costumes. Mama sent us down to the liquor store put boxes on us. I think we UPS, I guess, I don't know. And here's Steve's version. You've heard me say that every Halloween, I had the same outfit on. I just had a brown box, and he just told me to tell everybody I was a UPS man. I bet you saw exactly how Steve stole the joke. Well, let's just say Curry didn't take dealing his intellectual property very lightly. During an appearance on Fox Soul's The Mike and Donnie Show, the comedian and hanging with Mr. Cooper actor said he had beef with Harvey over the situation. Steve stole my material on his show, so I had a beef on that, he said. When he was on his Bullis talk show that he had, he did all of my Halloween material one Halloween. Well, Steve stole my material on his show, so I had a beef on that. On what show? On, when he was on his the, the, the talk show he had, and he did, he, he did all my Halloween material one Halloween. These are only some of the situations that prove what Steve Harvey is like when he's not pandering to the people who got him into that position. However, the damaging claims about this celebrity host ends. There was also the time Steve literally put a bodyguard in front of his office at work just to prevent the people he hired to work for him from having access to him. Just so you know, that's the lightest version of the story as the details are so much worse. You're telling people you work with I don't want you even to be next to me. Like I have such disdain for you that I I am annoyed by your presence. According to his fellow entertainers, it seems Steve's behavior among people he's superior to might be an effect of him always sulking up to the people he's trying to get favors from. It turns out this is something he's been doing since his radio days. Time and time again, Steve Harvey has proven that he'll do anything for money and power. What he didn't count on was getting exposed. According to Corey Holcomb, who is a fellow comedian, Harvey's whole break into the television industry was by kissing A. Holcomb revealed during an old interview that contrary to the popular perspective that Steve is a stand-up guy, the only reason he got his first job at TV One was because he was sulking up to the owner. That's how he got it. Everybody thinks Steve Harvey's some stand-up man. No, Kissed that old girl who owned TV One. He used to kiss her ass. That's how he had the radio show out here. That's not all. Holcomb also revealed that when Steve eventually found out he was getting fired from the show, he cried live on air for that very reason. And when he found out he was getting fired, he cried. Cried on air. Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> yeah. This tells you this man is someone who will do anything to get his way. While several fans are shocked at the realization of who Steve Harvey becomes in the dead of the night when no one is watching, others can't fathom how he even became famous in the first place. One of these people wrote, I haven't seen any of this man's shows. Can anyone explain to me why he's a big deal? He's not hot and judging by this memo, not that charming either. Is he one of those leftovers from the 70s who doesn't go away? We'll wait and see how his team plans to spin this one. In the meantime, time, what do you think about him? That's it. Goodbye.